Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, paying tribute to legends, we profile the five members of the UCF Athletics Hall of Fame Class of 2010 as we celebrate Hall of Fame weekend. All that and more next on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Hey, how's it going, Night fans? Welcome once again to UCF Sports Night. I'm your host, Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for joining us. It was another big week of athletics here on the UCF campus. It was Hall of Fame weekend. We had the induction ceremony for five newest members of the UCF Athletics Hall of Fame. The spring football game, also a huge baseball series with Rice at home. But we start with men's tennis as they celebrated senior day at the tennis complex against local rival Embry-Riddle. A great senior day it was as Brock Seiki, Johan Biegert, and Mark Roquefort all won their final matches as Knights at home against Embry-Riddle. It was an impressive performance all around as Mario Sampson finished things off at number six and a rainbow shined over the courts when it was over. Nine to nothing the final. UCF now heads to the conference tournament in Houston next week. Big week for baseball started with a home tilt with Stetson, and after trailing early, the Knights bats woke up. Shane Brown, Ronnie Richardson, and Chris Duffy all had at least two hits each, and Bo Taylor added a key RBI triple, and the Knights knock off Stetson 10 to six. That led to the big weekend with Rice at home, and in game one, the Knights had plenty of opportunities, but lost in the end by a final of nine to two. Game two was a different story though as UCF got a stellar outing from Owen Dew on the mound who tossed eight and a third giving up nine hits and getting out of jams all night long. Ryan Breen belted a home run and Joe Rogers nailed it down and UCF got the win six to four. So that set up a rubber game for first place in the league on Sunday and the Knights looked in good shape after this RBI hit by Chris Duffy. However, Rice would come back in the late innings and take the 13 to eight win. Softball had another key conference road series at UAB. Things got off to a rough start though as the Knights dropped the first two by scores of two to one and five to two. But UCF came back to take a big four to three win in game three on Sunday and that keeps them in the thick of things for the conference tournament. Women's tennis had its final home match of the season against East Carolina on Saturday. Katie Orletsky won her final singles match at home. And UCF finishes the season with a 12-6 record in dual matches this spring. They head out to Tulsa for the conference tournament next week. Track had a day trip up to Gainesville for the Tom Jones Memorial Invitational. Carly Dart finished with a new personal record in the 800 meters, as did Sanisha Williams in the long jump. And finally, the spring football game was held at Bright House Network Stadium. Fans got to see former Knights return to their alma mater, as well as some highlights from the current Knights, including Rob Calabrese with this 66-yard touchdown run. A good last tune-up for the Knights heading into the summer. And of course, for more news scores and features on every UCF sport, log on to UCFAthletics.com, your online home for UCF sports. Coming up next, we celebrate the five newest members of the UCF Athletics Hall of Fame. We've got that and plenty more when UCF Sports Night returns. Night fans, the 2010 Conference USA Outdoor Track and Field Championships are coming to UCF May 14th, 15th, and 16th at the Track and Soccer Complex. More information at 407 UCF 1000 and at UCFAthletics.com. So 1975, the United States ranked third in the world in percentage of the... Must be the new guy. I guess we can say I was with you guys the whole time. New guy. UCF and the Central Florida Research Park have helped create 41,000 jobs and contributed about $3.3 billion to the regional economy. Three, and that's only... New girl. So if it seems like your company's growing, it probably is. UCF stands for opportunity. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. This week was a very special week that we have every year here at UCF, Hall of Fame weekend. And we celebrated the induction of five new members into the UCF Athletics Hall of Fame. Here now a look at each of them. What I remember most fondly about being at UCF is the people that I met and the experiences that I had uh, with those people and 
my li lifelong friend. I learned a lot. I grew up at UCF. I was a, a young kid coming from Miami, um, probably rather immature. And so I really learned life lessons about what it is to be a good friend and what it is to be a part of a team and what it is to really work hard and uh, achieve uh, goals that we set for ourselves. So I really grew up at UCF. So I'm really thankful for everything that happened to me. Getting recruited by Jim Rudy, his legacy is a great coach and he's in the Hall of Fame at, at UCF and uh, he's trained a number of players that have played on the women's national team. So through my experience at UCF and through him, um, I was able to attain a lot of these goals that helped me um, you know, see the world and you know, make my living in soccer and have all these experiences that have really um, contributed to being the person that I am today. The legacy that I can think of is that I was sort of the first to do uh, many things in women's soccer. For instance, um, we hosted the Women's National Championship, the NCAA first ever Women's National Championship. And I was the, the goalkeeper in that game when we played uh, against the University of North Carolina. I happened to be lucky enough to be the first goalkeeper for the women's national team. So that was kind of a first as well. And I got to play with all of the great players that everybody knows by name. Uh, Mia Hamm, Julie Fowley, Michelle Akers. So I guess my legacy is being the first at some of these uh, historic events that have happened in women's soccer. The first of many to come, <laughs> come along. I think for me, Hall of Fame, it means that my legacy will be remembered for something that I believed in that will live well beyond my years. Perhaps maybe my kids or maybe your kids will find strength and find inspiration and dedication and find something that they saw in my efforts that they can draw strength from. And I think if they're able to see a little bit of themselves through my example on and off the football field, I think that will help to make my legacy more complete, first as a human being and second as an athlete. My first year, I didn't know what to expect. I was 17 years old, uh, my first year away from home, and all I had was hopes and, and the prayers of others. But I had to really learn what winning was all about. And it really wasn't about the points that were on the board at the end of the game. What winning meant to me was being able to extract the best out of myself when I was afraid to extract courage when I was weak to extract strength. And so for me, this institution allowed me to develop the inner qualities that I would need to be successful in life. And UCF has been a vehicle that allowed, has allowed me to see some things I never would have had the opportunity of seeing. I stand here to receive this great accomplishment on the shoulders of so many that have invested in me, their time, their prayers, their hopes, their dreams. It goes to show you that when you are persistent and you have a goal, you have dreams, and when you believe in yourself, it just goes to show you that all things are possible. And so I'm very grateful uh, for this opportunity to have been chosen as the Hall of Famer and getting the scholarship to come to Central Florida. You know, the UCF Hall of Fame is, is just a great deal of, of pride to me. It's a validation of some hard work. And it's, a, it's a validation of really the passion that I have for UCF. It's a validation of a lot of work that, and a lot of love. You know, I have a lot of love for this whole process, this whole being that is UCF athletics. Today, you just wouldn't see an athlete come through the program like, you know, you know, like I did. So. It's a rare opportunity. I certainly wasn't highly recruited out of, out of high school. Uh, as a matter of fact, I wasn't even recruited. Early in my career, I am an, an athlete. Coach Bill Moon had me on the baseball team. In 1978, North Carolina State, the Wolfpack, played in the Tangerine Bowl, and I went to that game. And I told who I was with at that game and said, I can play football, I can play college football. And 12 months later, who knew that UCF was going to have a team and that I would be on it 
and all of a sudden I'm running on the field. Everything in life is about timing, and for me the timing was there. You don't realize the unique uh, paths and crossroads that you're at. Everything is a struggle, don't get me wrong, but you know, you fight through it and you fight through the path and you just believe in what you're trying to do and you give it some intensity and things open up. Years later you look back and say, wow, you were so lucky. Well, I was so lucky. We all were, you know, we all were you know, part of that 719. I think any, any, any athlete that, that cherishes their experience will always reflect on their friendships. Those experiences with those guys are life-lasting. And you know, all you have to understand is the process of success is a lot of failure. And you have to understand that the process to be successful is just getting back up, trying harder. Um, I'm very proud of my English Channel world record, uh, paddling Loch Ness at 3 a.m. in the morning with 40 degree water and 40 degree air is, was quite the experience. I paddled the Irish Sea and owned a world record on that. That's, that was a unique experience. I've paddled three times from Cuba to the U.S. You know what, you can wrap all these things up, the books I've written, the charity that I've started, the, you know, all the unique things, and I'm going to tell you that my greatest experience was being a UCF football player. Don't go away. When we get back, we continue looking at the UCF Hall of Fame Class of 2010 when UCF Sports Night returns. Night fans, season tickets for UCF football in 2010 are available now. More information at 407-UCF-1000 and at UCFathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Let's continue our look at the UCF Athletics Hall of Fame Class of 2010. You know that uh, I've always you know, I've loved the academic side of campus life and I've loved the sporting side. From someone who grew up playing a lot of tennis and cricket as well and rugby, uh, you know, I, I did letter in four sports you know, in college and uh, and I, I was lucky that the people who helped me grow up taught me the balance in life. And I, and I hope that, that uh, the players appreciated all the academic opportunities that they had. You know. I had been told by my doctoral major professor, you go work with your good people. And by golly, I like these people, so it was an, an easy choice for me to because the President Milliken was a fine person. Dean Cal Miller was a really delightful man. And Frank Rhoda, was, the, the, those three sold me on the campus very quickly. Uh, Dr. Rhoda offered me the job and invited me and, uh, and he gave me a couple of tennis ball cans and uh, it was starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. You know, so I went around, tried to find out who, if there were any players on campus and there were no scholarships, of course, just local kids who came to school yeah, and enjoyed playing tennis. So it was just a, a, a very much a homegrown program to begin with. The courts were sandy. There was, uh, I remember even one match against Stetson where the match was halted because of sand. But the players generally had a great attitude towards you know, the, uh, the novelty part of it. And it was fun because you knew you were getting something started. And that's always a, a, a very you know, a pleasant experience. Starting anything is, is a, a nice challenge. And gradually then, a few years later, we got a couple of scholarships. And uh, some of the scholarship players turned out to be very talented players. And we just had a, 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 a spirit, a support system. That was you know, wonderful to, to have. That's the only reason I can think why we did so well. People enjoyed it, and it was a fun, open you know, community. And so 
I was very glad to have a chance to begin the program there. Yeah. Well, I met Mr. Dench, uh, I guess, early 1976 uh, at his office over on Holden Avenue. He was the type of guy that from the onset you could realize that he was uh, sincere and dedicated to this community and someone that really wanted to see this community change. It was a personal type of touch, you know. He was real sincere to his employees. He considered all of his employees his family. Um, and from day one, if you worked with Mr. Dent or for Mr. Dent, you never wanted to leave. He was just full of energy, full of a guy that would, would do anything in this world for you and treated all his employees. Way back when, you know, a lot of employees were really trying to get on, uh, it was really hard because nobody would leave. Everybody felt that, you know, they were one big family and uh, they just loved the way that Mr. Dench operated. He was a real football fan. And when he found out that UCF was trying to get a football team, make the football team, and then the struggles with the season ticket holders and the, the rule, all the rules, he wanted to know what he could do to implement or help UCF get their football team and make this community a viable community with a football team. If he was living today, you would almost have to do it to the fact that uh, he would have no part of it because of the fact that he was the type of individual that uh, didn't like a lot of fanfare, he don't like a lot of publicity, and he was kind of behind the scenes. Uh, he would give you his heart, and he just wanted the, the group to reap the benefits in there. So, but I think overall, he would be he would be proud of it as long as he didn't have to come and and you could just get the honor without him being there. I think his legacy is that the kids, uh, young people that come through your, the organization. Uh, really um, have been able to be supported in his ideas and I think his legacy would be that uh, if he could help somebody you know along his way and that's what he used to tell all of us that, you know if I can help somebody that's what I want to do I want to make sure that the, their full potential is reached and everybody has the opportunity to do whatever they need to do Congratulations to all the newest members of the Hall of Fame. It's an honor well deserved for each of them. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, we've got a look at some news and notes and a busy week ahead in UCF Sports. Don't go away, we're back in just a moment. Night fans, the 2010 Conference USA Outdoor Track and Field Championships are coming to UCF May 14th, 15th, and 16th at the Track and Soccer Complex. More information at 407 UCF 1000 and at UCFAthletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Our plays of the week and a look at the week ahead are on the way in just a moment. But first, we have a very special event to tell you about in News and Notes. Almost all of UCF student athletes, coaches, and staff were on hand in UCF Arena for the Black and Gold Gala last week. Coaches passed out awards to their top student athletes for the season, including honors for academic performance, community service, and athletic achievement. A couple of the highlights, women's golf won the comeback of the year, and women's soccer won the team of the year award. Time now for our Sports Night Plays of the Week. Here's play number three. Here's a look at play number two. Yeah, I went to school at 4,000. <laughs> and finally, here's play number one.
And those are your Sports Night Plays of the Week. The spring sports are starting to wind down as we look at the week ahead. Things start with a pair of home events on Wednesday night, starting with softball, taking on Bethune-Cookman at 5 p.m. You can see it live on UCFAthletics.com. Then at 6.30, the baseball team takes on Bethune. You can catch that on UCFAthletics.com as well. This coming weekend is a huge one for both tennis teams as they head out on the road for their conference championship tournaments. The women head out to Tulsa for their championship starting on Thursday and going through Sunday. Meanwhile, the men are traveling to Houston for their conference tournament, also Thursday through Sunday. Track has a big event coming up. They are in Philadelphia for the Penn Relays all day, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Baseball has another conference series on the road this weekend. They play Marshall up in Huntington. First pitches are Friday at 2.05, Saturday at 7.05, and Sunday at 1. You can see the action live on UCFAthletics.com. Softball is at home. Meanwhile, they take on Tulsa in a three-game series, starting with a Saturday doubleheader at 1 p.m. and finishing up Sunday at noon. The whole series is live on UCFAthletics.com. And on Sunday, the men's golf team begins its postseason at the Conference USA Championship held nearby at Red Tail Golf Club in Sorrento up in Lake County. The event goes through Tuesday as the Knights try to defend their title from last year. And fans, don't forget you can catch UCF Sports Night debuting every Tuesday on UCF TV. The show also airs on Bright Out Sports Network and Sun Sports. Check your local listings. And for all the latest news, scores, and features from every UCF sport, log on to UCFAthletics.com, your 24-7 online home for UCF sports. And of course, if you want to catch this edition again or you want to see any of our archived editions of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want online. All you've got to do is log on to UCF TV's website, which is at www.ucf.tv, or log on to UCFAthletics.com. That's going to do it for us for this week here on UCF Sports Night. We'll catch you again next week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thanks for watching and go Knights. Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV.